And welcome to Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers, episode 167. If you're looking to improve your photography, or your understanding of photography, then this is the place to be. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you click like somewhere down here as well, um, and be notified of future episodes. Um, today we're going to be talking about the From Above Challenge. So, a couple of weeks ago I set a challenge for shooting from directly above, 90 degrees, straight down, and how, and we talked through the different ways of how that can actually quite change the effect that we have on photography. Because very often when we're looking down, we kind of look down at an angle. So it was going to be interesting if we looked directly above. Now, that round about, give or take a couple, about a dozen or so entries, um, submissions into this challenge. Um, not everybody has actually done what I asked. <laughs> so one way of improving your understanding of photography is to understand what the question was. Well, anyway. <laughs> So, um, yeah, if you happen to be watching live, do leave a comment. Let me know where you are. Let me know what the weather's doing. Um, and yes, let's make a start. So, yes, here we are live on YouTube. Unless you happen to be watching the recordings. And of course, we do record them all. So if you're on YouTube and you go to the under understanding, if you go to my YouTube channel, kimairs.co.uk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> youtube.com forward slash Kim Ayers, that's what I meant to say, um, then you will uh, find the, all the previous 166 episodes and growing that happen to be sitting there. So I can see we've got a few comments in already. So uh, Robert has joined us, says howdy all from Texas. Pat says hi everyone from a sunny and warm Somerset. Uh, April says hello everyone from a mostly cloudy day with sun trying to come out. Long Island, New York. Nadia says hi everyone from a warm Fife. Janet says hello from an overcast, warm but not hot Mississauga. Uh, and that's in Canada. Uh, Rosemary says hello from a lovely Washington state. Hope everyone is well. Susan says hi everyone from a warm but overcast day in Kakubri. And it's the same here in Castle Douglas. Yes, warm but overcast. Good description. Um, Meg says hello everyone. Uh, Rosemary says, oh, uh, Rosemary and April are now having a chat to each other. And John says hello everyone from Ohio. Excellent. Right. Well, um, so. Yes, here we are. So what we're talking about today then is the uh, from above challenge. So two weeks ago, I talked about the notion of shooting down from directly overhead. And um, it is one of those things that most of the time we very rarely ever look absolutely straight down. When we're looking down on something, we tend to be looking at an angle. But when you go directly overhead, it can change our perception of it. And so as as people who enjoy photography and enjoy exploring what the camera can do with photography, I thought this would be a fun one to kind of set a challenge for. So two weeks ago, I put up all sorts of examples and then set the challenge. So like I say, we've got around about a dozen or so entries. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to look through the photos and, um, and see what everybody's put in. It's not a critique section. This week, I will be doing that next week. Uh, but this is this is basically the idea here is to inspire each other. OK, so um, sometimes, we, you know, we, we're given a challenge, or we're given an idea and we can we kind of think of one or two ideas. Um, but when we see what somebody else has done, we suddenly go, ah, oh, oh, that reminds me. Oh, I could do something like that. I, that could be fun. So that's the plan with that. So what we're going to do then is go through the photos. So what I'm going to do, I'll start then with Meg, actually, uh, my daughter Meg. So because actually I was Meg, as soon as I told Meg um, that, uh, you know, or soon, well, from two weeks ago when Meg watched this, she was, she got really quite excited and, and was immediately trying to think of ideas. And um, I really quite like what she, sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of that. I really quite like the fact that she started. So just to show you then that to, to me, this is a kind of a really classic, good example of looking straight down. So this is Meg's coffee. Meg, Meg likes to have a, um, a latte, homemade latte in the uh, in the mornings. And um, so what she's done here, she's got her she's got a latte cup. Now, you would normally see this sort of long, tall glass from the side with the handle and what have you, but you can't. You, you're not seeing the shape of the latte glass. You, you can't actually. What you're seeing is a circle from directly above. There's a little square of 85% chocolate 
something um, I have every morning with my coffee and sometimes Meg gets a square of that as well. We've got the teaspoon, we've got the, um, she's, she, Meg, Meg loves these beanies coffees, so there's lots of different flavoured coffees. Um, I can't remember what flavour it was Meg had on this particular day. But anyway, she said, I was thinking of what photograph I should do, I should take for the Looking Down Challenge, and I had a coffee idea, and I think it's a brilliant idea. And this is a kind of a classic case of what I was thinking of when I said looking down. You know, normally when we're looking for a coffee, we kind of look at a sort of slight down but an angle. But this directly overhead, we very rarely kind of tend to look at our coffee that way. And then what also happens here, because of the tablecloth has these kind of round circular patterns on it, they, they also kind of help echo the circularity of of the, the glass, the circularity of the saucer, and of the top of the beanie's jar as well. So, smug points to you there, Meg, I think. Yes, yeah, so let's get the smug points on their way. Um, and I thought this was a kind of a good, good starting point. So, uh, yeah, well done there, Meg. Um, oh, got a, another, I see, um, Marilyn's joined us as well, and says, good morning from a foggy Denver. I'm glad you could make it along. Um, what else have we got? Oh, Rosemary says, Meg, I love all those repeating circles. And April says, Meg, if I ever go to Scotland, I want to try one of your coffees. <laughs> nice shot. Excellent. Right. OK, so um, next up, then let's go for April. And um, so April sent in this rather beautiful shot of a butterfly. And it is, again, it's a wonderful straight down from above. Um, and April says, took this picture of a swallowtail this summer. It was very occupied in eating and did not fly away. And yeah, I did pretty well there. I mean, I must admit, most of the butterfly photos I've ever attempted tend to have be sort of blurred and out of focus as they decided to move and fly off the moment I tried to click the shutter. Uh, beautiful sunny day, lovely pattern in that we've got the flower underneath as well and the, the nice, the lovely colours. Um, but yeah, I, th I think to get it with its wings spread out, to get that lovely shape, the lovely colours, but absolutely from that directly above shot works really well there, April. So yeah, um, and for, I think, again, there's a kind of an interesting idea here that sometimes I think if, you know, if you're out and about, don't forget your trusty old phone. Because very, very often, I mean, if we've got the, if we've got our big bulky DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, and we've got to kind of lean over things and focus them all up and everything, chances are, an interesting thing like a, um, like this could have long gone. Whereas you can whip out your phone, and you can just kind of quickly go ahead, and as long as you've got a rough idea where you should be, tapping your finger on the screen to take the photo, you know, shoot off a couple, and your autofocus, auto exposure and that kind of stuff will quite often latch on to the um, take two or three while you get the chance pull, pull back chances are one of them will be in focus then you can drag it into your software and crop it um, I don't think you use the phone for this one April just um, mentioning that as a possibility but yes to actually get it while you've got the camera pretty impressive so smug points to you there April well done um, right uh, where are we um, uh, Rosemary says, I like this uh, April, pretty, uh, very pretty open wings. Susan says, great shot, April, well focused with softer flowers, works really well. Uh, April saying, thanks, Rose, they really seemed happy with their nectar. Meg says, uh, thank you for your lovely words and a very beautiful photo, April. Um, April sa um, is also saying thanks and um, to Susan and Meg, and I believe I used my small Canon camera. Yep, yep. okay, cool. All right, next up then we have Jackie. And uh, Jackie sent in this one. And one of the things I've noticed with Jackie quite a bit, if you're following her on Photo Crowd at all, she's really, really got into her um, portraiture and models, um, doing a lot of photography like that at the moment. And mostly she's doing it on a Sunday, so isn't able to join us live, uh, probably out there photographing at the moment. Uh, but she does always watch on Catch Up. And uh, Jackie said, this is my entry for from the uh, From Above, uh, challenge. The young lady wrapped in red fabric is Shivani and was photographed in my little home studio. To get the right angle I had to climb up a ladder uh, with my camera which was quite a daunting task. I chose red as it's a colour that always catches the eye immediately in comparison to the others. And yeah, very strong, bold kind of red. One thing that does strike me slightly with this one, Jackie, I did just want to say though, 
is it feels slightly desaturated. And I don't know whether that's my screen or whether it was a deliberate choice you made, but um, playing around in Photoshop, I just kind of boosted the saturation levels and allowed that red to kind of become a, a richer red. And I found it sort of popped a little bit more. Another fun thing with something like this, just as a little bit of fun, is um, when you are sort of directly above and you've got a um, somebody lying down, it's not always, you know, it's, it's not always obvious what angle it should be at. And sometimes you can just have a little bit of fun rotating. So if I go up here and I click the rotate, and what happens is very often when you rotate the image like this, um, you end up with quite a different kind of feel. This really feels very upside down, almost like one of those um, uh, aerial dancers on the long ribbons when they kind of swing upside down. Turn it this way, and it has a different kind of mood and feel again. Turn it this way, and it changes once again. And I think sometimes it's worth playing around with that. I mean, I'm sure Jackie did before for, uh, to, make, to decide which way around she was going to do this. But it just as a point for everybody else watching that uh, sometimes when you're taking a photo is it's worth actually just doing that kind of rotation just to see whether what difference it makes, because nearly always it does make a bit of a difference. And quite often, I mean, it makes a difference as in it makes it worse. But every now and again, something really quite interesting can pop up from just rotating the canvas around. So uh, just thought I would mention that um, always worth uh, worth an idea playing around with. Um, uh, well, Robert says, fantastic shot, Jackie. Marilyn says, beautiful shot, Jackie. Susan says, love this, Jackie. Great diagonals. April says, great shot, Jackie. I have seen a lot of your portrait photography. John says, stunning photo of the lady in red. And Rosemary says, very creative, Jackie. Right, okay, so next up then we have Janet. Um, and no, not that one. Uh, there we go, that one. And uh, Janet said, uh, this is a very old image. I know Janet was sort of struggling to find one that was uh, directly down. And she said, um, but it's definitely straight down as it was through the glass floor of the CN Tower. Now, I've never actually been there, but um, obviously a nighttime shot. And it's one of those old things. And again, it kind of happens with, with that kind of directly down that it can take you a little while to get your bearings, take you a moment or two to, to understand what it is you're actually seeing. When I look over here, I can then sort of see the orange street lights glowing and the, the bit of road going down there. So, but yes, yeah, so what do you say? There's a glass floor you can stand on. So you're really high up and you can stand on a glass floor. That must be quite terrifying. I can, I've, I've never done one of those things. I've heard of people standing on glass floor things with you know massive drops below. Um, and I can only imagine that it must really play with your, your sense of, you know, on the one hand, you've got a solid floor beneath you and you are perfectly safe. And on the other hand, your brain is just screaming, this is completely unnatural, what on earth am I doing here? Um, so yeah, a bit of fun. I think certainly if I was if I was standing on a glass floor, I'd be whipping out the camera as well. Or if I didn't have it, certainly whipping out the phone. Um, so some points to you there. I mean, it's certainly for going out and taking the risk to stand on it. Um, yes. <laughs> so, well, uh, some points to you there, Janet. Um, uh, what else have we got? Oh, Rosemary says, very good point about rotating. Very interesting. Uh, April says, cool night shot. Robert says, scary shot for those, especially for those afraid of heights. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. OK, let's move on. So Marilyn, Marilyn sent me a couple of entries for the above uh, from above challenge uh, where she said, I've only done a few still life from above, uh, but now you've inspired me to look elsewhere. That's really nice to know, Marilyn. And that's that. Yeah, that that makes me feel good because ultimately that's what these podcasts are about. We're hoping to and, and also these kind of challenges is the idea of um, inspiring, you know, hoping to give each other ideas to go because sometimes we can just kind of get sometimes they're a little bit locked in our own heads and not sure what to do next. And if somebody comes up with an idea or you see something on one of these podcasts and you suddenly makes you go, yes, let's go and try that. then that's absolutely brilliant. Um, so and where, where are we? OK, so we do that and we do that. So I'll, I will show both of the ones that Marilyn sent in because I really I really like them both. Um, and this is a, this is a, a good kind of classic still life. Um, it has all the right elements of st still life. So you've got a theme in this case. We've got our pasta. I've got a uh, colander. We've got the, the, the wooden spoons. We've got the chopping knives. Um, what else is there? So we've got tomatoes, garlic, uh, well, cloves of garlic as well as whole garlic, some spices there. And 
not entirely sure. I, is that kind of uh, chopped onion or chopped ginger? Um, grated ginger? Not totally sure, but the grated something. <laughs> um, and on a really nice little wooden board as well, which I think we, you know, so that kind of gives it that whole nice kind of rustic, natural kind of feel. Um, nicely laid out. And um, so, and that kind of, you know, we talked two weeks ago about that notion that you could do the, one of the ideas of the From Above is where essentially you lay out everything. Um, so I think I was showing you, for example, something from a French horn or um, another one was, uh, a, a, the, the material that would be used into making an outfit by a tailor and in this case what we've got is we've got dinner or lunch or, or something like that about to be made and we've got all the ingredients laid out nicely arranged um, so fun shot there uh, smug points to you definitely there Marilyn and then the second one Marilyn sent as well which I also thought was worth in including was this one which is a much simpler more minimalist kind of idea um, and I, again, I really like it. You know, it's, it's, it's just that that's really bold red thread. Um, and then it wiggles its way around next and then finishes up back with the, uh, with the needle as well. And very simple, but very effective, I think. And get, having that kind of very two dimensional from above effect that you get, except for the fact with the shadow and the way the light curves on the um, the reel. Now what might have been interesting with this is if the reel had been upright and you'd just been seeing the top of it but then had you been doing that you wouldn't you wouldn't have had that splash of red that which really works well for this. So yeah I like this I think there's, um, there's a lot to be said uh, for this one. So yeah two, two really good photos, two interesting photos and two photos that I'm sure will inspire other people to think yeah how could I do something like that? So double smug points to you there, Marilyn, I think. Um, right, okay. Oh, uh, where are we? Oh, Rosemary said, uh, oh, for Janet's one, this is so cool, very pretty with the lights and fascinating. Um, of course, this is the problem, is that I'm a few seconds ahead of you. I, I kind of, um, I, I say my bit, and then about 10 or 15 seconds later, you hear me saying it. So I, you're, I'm reading these, I'm saying something, you're typing after I've said it, I move on to the next picture and then of course I come back and find that <laughs> talking about the previous one as it's always been. Still, where are we? Um, April says great still life shot. Uh, Marilyn says cheese. Okay, so yes, grated cheese then, not grated ginger. Um, Susan says really like the pasta still life Marilyn, great lighting too. April says nice red against the white. Marilyn says, thanks. Robert says, very nice minimalist shot. I should have sent to myself. I had a few more options. I will send for critique later. Well, yeah, absolutely, Robert. You go for that. Um, play around with these ideas. And this is it. Just to um, remind you that, you know, that, that there is the critique section. Now, next week, and I'll say this again at the end of the, uh, the, end of the podcast, but next week is going to be a critique week. But I have another idea for two or three weeks time, which I really want. I, yeah, I kind of want a little bit of feedback and your opinion on. So stick around towards the, to, to the end. And because um, I've got an idea I want to run by and I could do with a quick show of hands to see whether anybody's interested. In. Anyway, I will come back to that. But what I do want to say, just take this moment to, to remind you that the critique section, the feedback section is here and it's here to help you get past those bits where you go, well, I've done this, but I'm not really sure. Does it really work? Or I couldn't get it to work quite how I wanted. How could I improve that? And, you know, there's very few places on the internet where you can really get genuinely good feedback. And certainly when it's not costing you anything. <laughs> but in, this is the place. This is one of those places on the internet where you can. And hopefully by now, after 166 episodes, well, on to 167th, um, you realise that I, I will be gentle with you. Um, anybody who is prepared to say, I've got problems with this, can you help? I am delighted to help. There, you, you never need to feel frightened or worried or, you know, um, threatened or anything like that there are places on the internet where you stick up a picture and immediately everybody kind of leaps in with claws out and teeth bared and, and what have you and it's not a particularly pleasant place i was always very keen right from the start um, that the foundation of the feedback that i give should always be positive 
so do make the most of that next week i will be doing a feedback only uh podcast so i will have room for three four maybe five depending on on the images so get them in get them into me as soon, early as you can ready for next week and um, I'll be hopefully it can help you pass whatever sticking points there's no particular theme on that it can be anything that's particular anything that's concerning you with any photo on any subject um, right oh uh, John says he agrees on the smug points too and Rosemary says Marilyn these are nice cool okay next up then we have Nadia and Nadia sent in this one said this is my picture for the looking down challenge um, and I rather like this i think this is fun this is so we've got these well, presumably perfume bottles and uh what nadia has done is she's placed a, a single light source at the front so we have the shadows and we have the light going because they're all glass bottles and they're glass with liquid in them and she's got them on this um this flooring or this tiling which is slightly textured as well I think this is really fun. It becomes quite abstract, again, in that way that we're looking straight down and it takes us a little moment or two to work out what it is we're seeing. And I always, I love that. I kind of always, it's fun with that. Um, slight feeling with this is a little bit more room to breathe would have made this slightly more interesting. It would have made it, you know, so part of the shadow is just disappearing off to the right here. Um, a bit going off now i know you sent me the raw file where you do have a little bit more room at the back uh, as well uh, but touch more on the sides and touch more at the front at the top as well i think would just give this a slightly nicer um feel and shape to it but having said that it's definitely smug points here i think the use of light through glass is always a, a fun thing to try out um single source of light creating the shadows and the light to the shadows um it's fascinating stuff uh, uh but then to use the the perfume bottles and arrange them like that I, it's a great idea uh so we're shooting from above but the light is creating all so all the action is happening in the shadows and the light that are projected through the bottles so definite smug points to you there nadia um thank you for sending that one in i thought that was a really great idea um, Robert, uh, Robert says, very clever, Nadia. April says, the sh those shadows are neat. Marilyn says, very creative shot, Nadia. Rosemary says, Nadia, the shadows create so much interest. And Susan says, the background texture really adds to this. Love it. Cool, right. Well, quick little reminder, if you happen to find these podcasts useful, interesting, entertaining, and you'd like to support them in some way, then buymeacoffee.com forward slash Kim Ayers is one of the ways you can do it. Don't forget also to invite your friends along as well. Tell the world just how wonderful these podcasts are. And let's grow this wonderful community of ours. All right. OK, so next on then we're on to Robert. Now, Robert's was a really interesting um, concept and idea. I um, Hang on a sec. Where are we? I need to close that. Oh, no, I was right in the first place. Open that. But then I need to press that to get rid of that and there here we go um however <laughs> i'm really i'm really torn with this robert because i like the photo and i love the whole idea behind the photo and what it of actually what it is but you're not actually straight down you are looking off you know it's not 100 it's not 90 degrees down it's 75 degrees down we're looking at a slight angle down at this um and one of the things that i was really trying to make clear was the idea of being directly down having said that um i think it's a fast so for anybody who's trying to work out what this is robert says this is a screenshot of a video um that i took of at the tehachapi tehachapi loop i'm not entirely got no idea how to pronounce that anyway a loop in california so using a drone so robert sent a drone up he's got video footage and then he's taken a still from the video um and says it was built in the 1800s to slow trains down that come off the mountain and he's um robert actually did he showed me a video of the like the train coming down and going around this loop then it's quite in absolutely incredible so the track comes all the way down it says the train track comes down goes around in this huge great loop and then disappears off this way and so if i zoom in a bit you can then see this 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 train coming around just how long this train is i mean we know all these individual carriages you know how long a train carriages and they just kind of go on forever 
until we come right round. So here's the front part of that train. Um, so it's a huge, great thing. So obviously, I guess if you're coming off a mountain, then and you've got that amount of carriages, the, the sheer force and weight and kinetic energy that's in that, that if you don't slow it, find ways of slowing it down, then you, you're kind of asking for trouble. I'm sure there was, wasn't there a 70s film, Runaway Train or something like that? I'm sure there's been a couple of um, movies based about films that are uh, trains that are coming down, down these sort of hundred mile long mountain slopes and what have you, only the brakes have failed. <laughs> and probably remakes of the films too. Um, anybody remember a specific one? Leave it in the comments. Um, but yeah, quite fascinating. I had no idea this exists. Uh, I went away and Googled it. Absolutely fascinating. Um, so I love the idea. I think it's a really nice loop that you've caught there. It's just, I really wish you'd just ah, above and gone 90 degrees down. So smug point for, 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 for the interest of it, but mm, take off half a smug point for, for the knock. So half a smug point. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, I'll give you two smug points because it's a great thing and then I'll take one off. So you still end up with one. Okay, well, we'll go with that one. I don't know how to operate smug points here. We're, we're all making it all up as we go along. Um, but thank you for sending that one in, Robert. Um, right, okay, where are we at? Uh, Oh, Nadia was thanking everybody from the com uh, for the comments, and Robert says, "Okay, Tehachapi, Tehachapi, is, is how you pronounce it. So that's the Tehachapi Loop in California. So go and take a look." Um, April says, "Crazy road, it's really cool. Um, did not realise it was a train track from above. Wow." And Robert says, thanks for the smug point. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's move on then to Sandra. And Sandra sent this one. And this is another one where you're almost, almost, I, you, you, need, you need, I was looking for the 90 degrees and this is a sort of 80, 75, 80 degrees. Um, again, though, uh, probably one where I have to give you two smug points and take one away. Um, I like, I, I really like, I like the curve. I like the steps coming down. I like the fact that you have this lad here on the steps coming down, but we also see the steps under here as well so that whole notion of the stairwell and the curving under and of course the couple sitting here on the bench inside that curve um echoey you know as a nice little kind of contrast to the lad excuse me who's coming down the stairs looking at his phone um at the same time uh so i, I like i really like the shapes in this one um, so I will just say actually, so Sandra's, Sandra's comment on this was I had to raid the back catalogue um, for a photo for the challenge. Uh, it is a photo I took at Tate Modern, looking down as I was leaning over the concrete wall, looking down on the stairs below. So really nice shape, and but much like Roberts, I think it's uh, it's a good photo. It's just not quite on brief for what I was for what I was saying. Um, but you know, so yay, you know. Two smug points, let minus one. Okay. <laughs> it's just going to be a theme somewhere along the line. Um, but yeah, thanks for sending that one in, uh, Sandra. Um, and where are we? Uh, April says it reminds me of a photo that the experts enjoy. Good shot. And Susan says, nice one, Sandra. Like the simple colour scheme and the curves. Okay, so next on then actually is Susan. And Susan also sent me two. Uh, I remember last week Susan said, you know, are we just supposed to send one or um, for the for the uh, for the challenge? And generally speaking, I do say just send one photo. Uh, but I said, you know, uh, do send me two if you um, you know, if if you really feel the need, or because I, to be honest, I never know how many I'm likely to get. I think I have had challenges where we've only had half a dozen photos before now. Uh, so it's always nice to sort of see a little bit more. Um, variation to give people different ideas and i uh, what i loved about you know i was happy to show marilyn's two because again marilyn's two were really quite different and if we're talking about showing you photos to inspire you with ideas that was really useful and likewise then susan has also sent two which have very different feel to them so i thought it was well worth um showing both of them and this not that uh this here we go i mean beautiful beautifully um Graphic is a kind of you know just it's a kind of graphic abstract. And Susan says black and white plates 
I was stacking plates today as they came out of the dishwasher in a rather random fashion, but liked how they seemed to form a pattern. I rearranged them, placed them on my faithful black glass in front of a window. I did some slight cropping, mainly to straighten the image and some minor adjustments in camera raw. And I think that's brilliant. And I love this. I, I, I love this on a, on a couple of levels here. I mean, I think it's a great photo. And, I, you know, we've got the curve, we've got the square, we've got the curve, we've got the curve, we've got the black, we've got, you know, we, we've got all, we've got the shades. It's not a, it's not a flat white. So we've got the kind of shades of kind of moving through the greys. We know it's a white plate, but it's partly in the, with the shadows. We've got the, the square plate with the, that little kind of curved angle coming down within. We've got the bowl with slightly deeper rim on it here. So there's lots of, for what is essentially a black and white image, it's got lots of shade and texture in it, while at the same time being beautifully clean lines. Uh, so I love that. I think the photo is great. But I also love the idea that you got it from while emptying the dishwasher. And it's a, it's a really, you know, it, it's that's a, I, that kind of a thing whereby you can be inspired by just the most mundane, everyday habits that you're just doing something that you've done a hundred times before, but there's a bit of your brain that goes, oh, that looks a bit interesting. That photographer's eye that that, uh, that we develop. And I think sometimes the problem is, is we can go, if, for some people, you can go quite a while without taking photos and you start to lose that bit. And I think it's one of the um, sort of real ideas behind the idea of you should be photographing pretty much every day if you can, even if it's nothing much. And even if those photos are never really going to be used for anything. The, it's about training your eye to see so that you start to notice things in ways that they could be formed as a photograph. And certainly when we come to abstract things, there's bits around all the time, you know, corners of tables and um, edges of brickwork and fences. From, and this whole idea from above is one of the things I talked about was the from above can get is really quite good often for giving us that slightly more abstract idea. And this then has that completely. So definite smug points for you there, Susan. Um, uh, but Susan didn't just send the one. She, the other one she sent was this one, which is a completely different feel. Also black and white, but three vases. So she says, three vases, my backup choice if you don't have many images. Uh, these are three small vases, just a couple of inches high. I originally placed them on a red background, but the resulting image made the red look very noisy. Although I did, however, like the vibrance of the red and white. However, I decided to desaturate and prefer this version. And again, that works. That's that's I like that idea. So you've done you. It's, if the color version of this is against the red background, and I can understand why you chose that red. Yes, that it would be really vibrant and kind of a, a sort of slap in the eyes or slap on the face or whatever. It's kind of an assault, not an assault on the eyes, but it would have been, you know bright red would just make you go whoa. That stands. It would fly off the screen at you. Um, turn it to black and white and it's got a totally different mood and feel to it. But if you're saying that the red just ended up kind of feeling too noisy, then actually but going black and white really calms it, really calms it down as well. And um, again, we've got these beautiful soft shadows. You say you're using place by the window, using natural window light um, and fantastic textures on the vase here as well on the vases and all these little kind of blobs and you know the, that you can feel the texture you know what that would feel like and every single one is showing up through the shadows and the lighting so as a textured photo it, that that side light again works really well but that from above gives us that slightly more abstract feel to it um and i you know it's similarly to um i think nadia's uh perfume bottles you know that notion when you've got directly looking from above but you've also got a single light source and the way these shadows form can be a really good way of playing around with this with this um this idea this photographic concept so double smug points for you then susan um for two great images um really like really like both of those ones uh, okay what are the comments then um uh, April says, very creative, great abstract. Marilyn says, wonderful black and white and abstract. Rosemary says, oh, this looks like something you see framed on the wall of a high-end restaurant. It exudes classiness. <laughs> Makes me want new dishes. 
<laughs> John says, I think the, uh, the photo of the plate is great. I would definitely give smug points. Uh, Robert says, agreed. She has been developing the photographer's eye. Great catch. Uh, looking forward to the next idea you catch. Uh, Marilyn says, oh, nice. And April says, love the vases also. And Susan says, thanks, Kim. And everyone. Cool. Excellent. Right. OK, next then we have Fiji. And, and so Fiji, I think um, this one comes under the... Um, move the F there, uh, comes under the double smug points, great idea, and then smug point taken away because it's not from above. Again, VG, a bit like Robert. You know, how long have you been doing this? Well, you're not listening. <laughs> um, no, I think this is a fun idea. I really do think this is a fun idea. So VG says this is from the, uh, uh, the above challenge. Um, and my colleagues posing for me. And so that's brilliant. So you managed to grab a few of your work colleagues and get them involved and get them to do this. Ah, you know, I mean, it's brilliant. I think when you can start roping in people and they're happy to give up their time and, and do this for you. And, and um, I, I think that's brilliant. I really love that idea. I think this is one of those where had you got directly above and looking directly down, I think this it would have been beautiful. I think you, it would have just elevated it up another level again. It really would, VG. Um, and as well as then being on brief with the with the um, with the challenge, I just think it would have ended up being a more interesting photo. I mean, I like the photo. I do. I think it's a fun photo. But it's that feeling that had you been absolutely above this, that's then where your photo then goes up to the next level. And then you have something which is a really great photo. And that's the one that you then can start sort of putting in for challenges and competitions and, and things like that. So it's a great idea. And I would say play around in the building that you've got. And if there is somewhere that you can get where you can be absolutely directly above 90 degrees straight down, then I would say try and repeat this photo. Do another version of this. Um, I think, you, you know, you could have quite a lot of fun with something like this. Also, and I don't know whether the opportunity would be really there. I, I, it looks like there's some quite sort of large windows here. But I can't, this is again like Susan's and like Nadia's photo. Something like this would look really interesting if you were looking straight down, but then you had a single light source coming. Maybe if you did have a, you know, a flash or something or flash in a softbox just on one side. So you then got the shadows coming out along from this wonderful shape. The shadows would create something else as well if you were shooting down from above. So yes, smoke points there for, um, uh, for the idea. Less one for... <laughs> Not completely filling the brief. However, I think the idea is there. I think the potential is there. And I think you could really do this again. But just get that directly from above. And you will really have um, an amazing photo. And then shift it up to the next level. Uh, but thank you for sending that one in, VG. There are lots of lovely ideas in that, I think. Um, so... April says it's a very fun looking shot and um, Rosemary says it would be a great variation on a star from directly overhead. Yes. Right. OK, so we're now going to move on to Rosemary herself. And now Rosemary has actually sent in two photos as well, but I love them both. So again, I've included both of them. And Rosemary started saying, uh, I look for opportunities to catch an image of my granddaughter from above all week. And that has been tricky because she usually stops whatever she is doing to ham it up for the camera. <laughs> yeah, kids can be like that. Uh, in this case, it would have meant looking up and that was not the image I was after. This afternoon, she was practicing walking by pushing a chair. So let me show you the photo. Oh, here we go. Sorry, remove that. And uh, so and this is great. This this is actually this is exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. So. Beautiful, beautiful, you, don't, ah, you know, the, the little chubby hands and arms of a, of a baby. You just you can you can feel the softness of the skin. And, you know, yeah, it kind of was, makes any parent go a little bit gooey. Um, so cute. So cute. And then so she's got this little chair. Which she's pushing, she's pushing along the floor. Um, so this afternoon she was practicing walking by pushing a chair, a chair, sorry, a chair I had as a baby. And her mind was engaged in the activity. So this is a very small chair then, obviously. Well, oh yeah, I guess if that was an adult-sized chair, you'd be a very, very big baby. <laughs> um, the photo I was hoping... Um, so I was able to put my iPhone to good use to catch her from above. 
Uh, this was the photo I was hoping to get for the challenge. I sent it to my computer for a bit of editing to bring out some contrast and the rattan of the chair and the floor colour. So yeah, brilliantly done. So that's that's it. Perfect. So you, and this is you know back to that notion of pull out your phone and you know it, it, these quite often tend to be more flexible than anything else. So I'm, I I were you were you standing above her or were you, or have you got like a little kind of balcony level mezzanine level or something um, in your living room and then looking down from slightly further above Rosemary. Um, uh, it's, a, it's slightly difficult to kind of get a sense of how far above you are on whether you're zoomed in or whether you're kind of not very far above and sort of zoomed out a little bit, which it doesn't look like because of the way the, the I would expect then sort of slightly more distortion, I think, if you were too close. Um, but yes, I, a great photo, a lot of fun. Um, anyway, what I, but let's let's show you the second photo too. So smug points for this one and then smug points for the next one. She says, but then she tired of walking where she started interacting with her dogs. And there was this one perfect moment where she stole the dog's ball. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't pass up this one. I can't believe I actually caught her red handed. And here we go. This one. <laughs> Isn't that just brilliant? I just love this. Yeah, I mean, it's absolute perfect timing. That little hand coming out and just grabbing the ball from between the dog's leg. I mean, you know, um, the patience of dogs uh, sometimes is just quite extraordinary and you know just as well really uh, she's uh, so anyway says I can't actually I can't believe I actually caught her red-handed while this isn't the image I was expecting to come away with it would be the one I would want to offer up for the challenge again this one is slightly edited to pull out a little bit of contrast since everything is naturally pretty tan I know you prefer we send in just one image for a challenge, but I couldn't resist. And you know, I, I mean, again, I, I'm more than happy with this one, uh, Rosemary. I think they're both great images, and I can absolutely see why this was the one you were going for, and it's a great image. And then suddenly this opportunity comes along, and you manage to grab it, and um, it's an even more fun image. But they're, they're both good, certainly well deserving of smug points for the both of them. So thank you ever so much for sending that one in, or both of those ones, Rosemary. Uh, comments here, uh, you know, April says, so cute. Um, Marilyn says, wonderful shot. Susan says, well done, Rosemary. Must have been really difficult to get. Rosemary says, I was standing above performing a gymnastic stretch overhead. <laughs> okay, up on your tiptoes. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, nicely done. Um, Susan says, oh yes, love it. April says, so adorable. Meg says, absolutely amazing shot, Rosemary. And it really are, oh, they're great shots. So cool. Okay, so that actually pretty much that brings us to the end of the photos that have been sent in. So thank you to everybody who sent in photos. Smug points all round. Um, right, so don't run away. One of the things I want to talk about is um, Susan, in fact, actually, when she sent me in her photos, wanted to uh, sort of had an idea which she, she, she was curious about whether it was worth the discussion. And I think it is, but I'm, I'm curious as to know whether anybody else is up for this, or whether you'd like me to explore the notion of AI imagery. So AI, I mean, you've seen me use some of it um, in uh, already. So like last week when I was looking at somebody's beach huts or, or my, I think it was my own beach huts, in fact, actually. And then I used the auto generate in uh, the image generator in Photoshop to create a set of reflections that took me but it was a typed in prompt. I didn't actually cut anything out, move anything around in Photoshop. I literally typed in what I wanted and then the computer generated it for me. Now, this has been the thing of 2023, I think, you know, th since sort of somewhere around, you know, just a little bit before Easter, it feels like it exploded onto the scene. That AI imagery is now really come to the fore. And it's this idea that you type in the words rather than you manipulate anything. I mean, for a long, long time, we've been manipulating images. As soon as you point the camera in this direction rather than that direction, you are deciding what's being included and what isn't. And by that, you can you can make you can change somebody's idea of what was actually going on. That's a manipulation by pointing. Then we get into editing. All the time, every week, I show you editing techniques. We crop off this bit, we darken that bit. Sometimes we remove this bit, or sometimes we add in that bit. We clone out that bit, we soften that, we change the color of that. So we are editing images all the time. 
And then there's things like the uh, auto expand, you know, where I've kind of expanded bits and it's filled in the gaps for me. So there's already there's levels where we are manipulating and then there's levels where we're getting the computer to help us manipulate, manipulate more, manipulate more. But now there's this idea of AI imagery where you literally just type in command prompts and images appear. The question is, is, is it photography? Is it art? Or is it some kind of morally corrupt te um, technology that ought to be consigned to, you know, ought to be banned and uh, nobody should be allowed to use? Um, there's a, so there's a huge debate going on. I've got particular ideas. Everybody seems to have some kind of thought. Some people are kind of still not really sure where they sit on it. So um, I'm really kind of, uh, so I'm thinking about the idea of, maybe doing a podcast to explore the idea, explore some of the, to, to, to talk about what are the questions we need to ask when it comes to AI imagery. Um, how does it affect us as photographers? Is it something we should be embracing? Is it something we should be steering clear of? And I think there's debates to be had. Now, I need to have a think about this. If you're interested in this, then I will go away and I will work out particular questions. I may set up some little polls um in the facebook group or you know, during the even during the podcast to get people to sort of to, to get shows of hands and i will be then welcoming in questions um about it to see how that would shape the the debate as we would have it so if you think that this kind of ai artificial intelligence um generated imagery is something we should be exploring then let me know give me a little thumbs up say hi yes no whatever in um in the comments now or email me or put something into the facebook group and um we can take it from there so a couple of uh quick comments here what have we got um uh oh april just finished april saying i find it amusing how uh, how so many genres can come in this contest so uh different from one from one another yeah absolutely um that's like getting part of the fun because you're looking down you can have any kind of still life or people or portraiture um street photography pretty much every genre of photography can cope with an idea of looking down on some level um so april says i'm unsure if adobe elements has this function I, I don't think it does but there are places there are it's not just photoshop that's doing it there are other places as well mid journey is one of the big ones where you can go there and create all sorts of amazing fantastic scenery and um, and there's various other ones i think um even bing microsoft's bing.com has a version where you can kind of just type in elements and create images as well um and Marilyn says, I think it would be great to talk about AI. It's only going to get bigger. And Pat says, interesting to know more about AI as well. OK, so there's a couple of people saying yes. So have, start having, I'll start having a think about this. Um, and like I said, I'll maybe start. So have a, you, I want you to have a think about this. And if you have any particular questions, if you have any particular angles, take something interesting you heard about it, which you think is worth bringing into the debate, then send me an email or leave a comment in the Facebook group, the Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers Facebook group, um, or directly email me, kim at kimayers.co.uk, with your thoughts, with your question, and then I will try and gather these. And then sometime in the next two or three weeks, we'll have an AI-themed um, podcast where what we'll do is we'll discuss it. Maybe I'll show you on in Photoshop or even one or two other um, places how, how you can do how you can do this, what it, and we'll kind of discuss the implications of what it means for us as well. Um, Janet says, interesting idea to learn about AI. Okay, so, so far we've had a, three or four um, positive comments in that direction. Right, okay, so that's it then. So next week is a feedback only um, podcast. So send me your images, send me your images that you would like to get some kind of feedback on and um, let me know what your sticking points are. Tell me a little bit about the photo and I will do my absolute best to help you move forward. So thank you ever so much to once again to everybody who sent in all the uh, images and um, look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care. Bye bye.